Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's FP Virtual Dialogue, Demographic Realities, the Truth About Global Population Trends. I'm Dr. Maisha Alam, Senior Vice President of Research at Foreign Policy. Contrary to common misconceptions, the world's population is not on the verge of collapse. In fact, the world's population continues to grow with projections estimating the global population will be 8.5 billion by 2030 and 9.6 billion in 2050. Population trends vary widely across regions and countries with significant implications for national economies, healthcare systems, and social protection infrastructure. Additionally, policies on gender equality, family planning, and migration continue to shape population dynamics, and population trends are deeply intertwined with broader social, economic, and environmental challenges. Understanding these relationships and patterns offers valuable insights into how nations can respond to and invest in the evolving needs of their populations. But what does the data actually show? Can you help us understand which key factors, variables, and approaches are most overlooked when trying to understand population dynamics? We know, for example, that in Africa still, most of the country are still with fertility uh, above the level of replacement. And probably they will be in that situation for some years ahead. They will be growing in terms of the population. And the other extreme, we have an increasing number of countries with very fertility, very low, or low in which things are completely different. And when you look at societies, you know, whether they're youth bulges today, they will be aging bulges soon enough, you know, or they're already suffering aging bulges or experiencing rather aging bulges. So I think behind every demographic trend, there lies a sort of deeper human story. And it's really more often than not a gender. In fact, it's always a gender. We surveyed about uh, 10,000 respondents across uh, 14 countries. Um, we found that what people want in most cases is to have two children. Uh, you know, desired family size is surprisingly similar across different contexts. And yet one in five people expect to not achieve their desired family size. Uh, most people, they expect to underachieve their family size and some people even expect to overachieve their, their family size. And this is because essentially societies are not providing the conditions for people to exercise true choice over what is one of the most consequential decisions in, in their lives. Now, investing in contraception ensures that women get uh, uh, paid more. And uh, in Kenya, there was a more than 14% rise in control over their own money, over their own wages. In Senegal, there were investments in contraceptive supply chains that averted about 2,000 maternal deaths. Where else can you find such a return on investment? Because, you know, these outcomes don't just show up in fertility rates alone. They appear in classrooms, they appear in health clinics, in community councils, etc. Unlocking progress that we really need to see in areas that we highlighted earlier around, you know, education and SDGs, etc. And that's why we say it's not just a health intervention, it's about rights and the mm -hmm. development multiplier. We've had an expansion of choices, but in mm -hmm. a country which has such a large young population, if we had a greater choice in temporary methods, long-lasting methods, I think Indian women would uh, be able to exercise their rights and have greater reproductive justice. So having said uh, earlier that globally and in India, women's choices and agencies do shape uh, demographic futures of the world, um, I'd like to say that the anxiety that um, climate change is causing amongst a lot of people also leads to uncertainties. And we are seeing uncertainties all around us. And that is one factor where people are having fewer children. You know, often what we see in the media either oversimplifies or mischaracterizes this really complex and nuanced demographic moment that we are living through. A number of our speakers today have talked about the diversity of demographic trends around the world. And I think that is really important for us to take away from this conversation today. 
is that we live in a demographically diverse world and that when we look at demographic trends, we need to understand what is behind them. That population often is focused on numbers, but behind every number, of course, is a person. Um, we need to be able to marry the data with the conversation on rights and the conversation around commitments that all countries have made toward ensuring that women and girls around the world have access to services and information to be able to, to achieve their childbearing desires. So it is really important that we not be completely distracted by the conversation around depopulation. And we remember that we have not yet finished the job for women and girls around the world who still lack meaningful access to the information and services that would, it would enable them to have the family size that they would like.